Today I'm going to be playing this Reno Druid, courtesy of Dickle Pickle on Patreon. So this Reno Druid list doesn't have any like specific combos or specific win conditions or anything like that. It just has a lot of pretty decent value stuff. We've got Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, Nazoth, Ysera Unleashed, we've even got Survival of the Fittest, uh, Primordial Protector to draw Survival of the Fittest. And then we've got some lighter combos. We've got like Germination, which can go with Archmage Vargoth and be pretty strong. Uh, we can use the Germination along with Forest Warden Omu, which can be decent. Any of our big value things can be copied by a Gloop Sprayer. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this deck. This deck was sent to me before the mini set came out. And I do think there are a few mini set cards we can add to this list. Um, a Jerry Rig Carpenter package. I think this card is like really broken and wild at the moment. Moonlit Guidance is probably good. Uh, maybe even Mr. Smite because we do play Nazoth. But for the moment, I want to play it as is so I can figure out what's worth cutting. Alright, another Warlock. The last one I played against was just like Handlock. Nothing too special. Um, I got an Overgrowth. That's really nice. Do I keep Imprisoned Seder? Probably. It's not like it's doing anything specific in this deck, so... Keep it to play on turn 3. This discounts by five. So, I don't know, getting it to discount Gloop Sprayer would probably be the best here. Uh, I could coin my Circus Amalgam to try to kill that. They're probably playing Kazakas this turn, which is not great for me. I feel like trying to kill Bran is pretty important, but maybe I'm overvaluing it. Alright, I get to kill the Bran and I get my mana. I'm on 7 next turn, which is not great to be honest. But I can go ahead and set up the Seder, I guess, and plenty of stuff I draw could be useful next turn. Probably do want to hold Solar Eclipse for Cenarian Ward. Or I guess I would rather be holding Cenarian Ward for Solar Eclipse. Shockingly bad hand. But I can play Sheldrass next turn, which is good. And then Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, yeah, she gives zero cost cards now. Zephyrus on an empty board with four mana, that's gonna be, okay, Twilight Drake, sure. Not even convinced that Sheldrass is better than Emerald Explorer here. But it does cost more mana. And if I hit, like, Survival of the Fittest or something, it's pretty insane. Why? <laughs> Why did you kill your whole board to kill my 5-5? Five five? Oh, auto-cast. Nice. Forgot about that. Well, I kind of wanted to play Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, but it's weird here because it's so inexpensive. 
could play it alongside Vargoth, but I'm pretty sure Vargoth doesn't cast the uh, the Ferocious Howl. I'll just drop a Fizzy Elemental, I guess. Then next turn can be Emerald Explorer and Dragon Queen Alexstrasza. Wow, that was like pretty close to the five best cards remaining in my deck. Um, I probably do want Elise to copy Alexstrasza and Nazoth. Let's just go for this combo this turn. Big high roll and a big low roll. So I'm going to drop to seven next turn. Just need to be able to play a card and then a lease. Come close Can just kill the 8-8 eight eight here. Alright, it's auto-cast still. I think I have one more auto-cast as well, right? It would be a germination. This is kind of sick, isn't it? Goodness gracious. If I'm wrong about still having an auto cast, this is really terrible. But I was not wrong. Oh yeah, I guess I don't... Uh... Have to have like a super empty hand for Elise because it does copy from left to right, doesn't it? So I actually really only need like three slots in hand to play it. Seven health is kind of an annoying breakpoint. Do I just want to gloop here? Gloop sprayer is kind of sick, isn't it? Uh, that was not bad. I've already played all the stuff that's good with Vargoth, right? Alright, so I have seven cards in hand here. I play Elise. It copies the four minions. Then I have a full hand. So playing Dragon Queen Alexstrasza is kind of weird. Maybe I just dump the Lightning Bloom to do that. If I play Lightning Bloom first, then my hand is still full, so it's not really that useful. Need a hand, explorer? Light and hope are worth fighting for. Garbage tier dragons. Um Cobalt Spellkins, fine I guess. I don't think it really matters too much the quality of the dragons, though. I have another Dragon Queen Alexstrasza and double Nazoth. I'm not sure how big the Nazoth is at this point, but it does have two amalgams, so those help cover a lot of bases. Uh, definitely played other dragons. I played Primordial Protector as an elemental. Should be full board Nazoths. And hey, now I even have beasts. Draw a beast. Okay, so this card does nothing, but it does get out of my hand for Alexstrasza. Which is probably what I want here. Light and hope are worth More terrible dragons. Love to see it. The 5-6 isn't that bad. 
But this definitely had to be uh, the two Dragon Queen Alex Strauss's combined. Definitely was a low roll. So I've seen Defile, Godfrey, and Twisting Nether, and Caladan. So my Nazoths, back to back Nazoths, probably do just win the game. This thing is a demon, I see. I think pushing this five is pretty good here. Makes it pretty likely I can just kill with Zephyrus. Oh. Um, just drop another Nazoth here, I think. What a low roll. There's the Reno. Another Reno I don't think is that big of a deal. So I can draw Zephyrus. I would hit for one, Lunar Eclipse, and then Bloodlust. Which is 10, 17, 18. I think Zephyrus is lethal. Probably do the math again. I have 10, 15, 16, 18. Need Bloodlust to do 12, which it does. Well, that was pretty good, because I think I got quite unlucky. My Alexstrazas, my Nazoths, and the Ticketus milled a lot of good stuff. After playing a couple of games with this deck, my initial fear of awkward draws was pretty much confirmed. So I think I would like to make some changes, and with those changes, I think I would like to lower the curve a bit. So first I want to cut this Sheldrass, because I don't think we have like a ton of big insane spells, and a lot of the cheaper spells we can get from it are pretty bad. We don't really have a Polkelt to abuse it, so don't like the Sheldrass too much. Uh, I also want to cut the Gloop Sprayer, because I think it's a bit situational when we could just play other straight-up good value cards. Uh, Fizzy Elemental, I think, is just a little bit too expensive, and we do already have a couple of other Elementals for Nazoth. Graybow, I think, just doesn't necessarily fit the deck super well. If we have any of our big minions sticking to the board, I don't think we really need the Graybow. Um, Swipe, I also want to cut because I just kind of feel like it doesn't really kill that much in Wild. Could be wrong about that, but that's my initial impression of it. Um, Speaker Gidra, I don't love. I don't think we really have great spells to combo with it. And I think it just tends to be a bit expensive for what it does. Living Seed, I believe, only hits Circus Amalgam and Winged Guardian. I don't think either of those are particularly good, and I don't really love the breakpoints on this card. And then, finally, I think I want to cut Lightning Bloom. I think in decks like this, Lightning Bloom tends to give you a good turn, but then it tends to completely screw up your next turn. So I think I'd rather just play another Ramp card over that. And speaking of another Ramp card, I think I do want to include both Jade Blossom and Wild Growth. Because this deck really, really just wants mana. So I think both of the ramp cards make sense. Um, I also want to include a couple of new cards. I think Moonlit Guidance is just good. And it's a cheap way that we can make up for some of the value I just cut. 
like imagine playing Moonlit Guidance and getting an extra copy of uh, even Reno, or like at least the Enlightened seems pretty good. Um, I also want to play Jerry Rig Carpenter. If I'm not mistaken, there's a bug in Wild right now, or not even really a bug, but with Jerry Rig Carpenter and you draw a Hidden Oasis, uh, the two separate spells from Hidden Oasis are really cheap, so it tends to be a really overpowered early game play. And uh, I'm pretty interested in taking advantage of that. If it's already been patched, then this is a bad inclusion, but I think it makes sense to abuse it for now. And then there are a handful of anti-aggro cards I want to play. Maybe this is me just being a standard player overrating these cards in wild, but Spreading Plague has to just be a really good card, right? And Malfury in the Pestilent has to just be a really good card, right? And Zilliax as well. Alright, so I did some science, and apparently Jerry Rig Carpenter was hot fixed, so we don't want to play that combo. And instead, I think I just want to play like a Crystal Power and a Wrath. Just give myself a little bit of early game stuff. The last Paladin I played against was Murloc Paladin. I don't know if I really need Lunar Eclipse. I'd rather just try to find a dragon for Breath of Dreams. Man, hitting a dragon here would be so insane. Not sure what Christology means. I guess I'll just YOLO it. Well, I can just coin Overgrowth next turn. Making Mummies. Well, this should definitely be a value matchup. I guess I just Zilliax here. It's not particularly good, but not particularly bad either. Well, pretty good 7 drop. Uh, I guess I can just play Protector here. Oh, good 10 drop. Usually I get 7 fives. Dragon Queen Alex Straza, I suppose, is the play here. Life and health are oh wow, that's actually insane. Do I... 
I can probably play Temporis, right? There's like no way they can kill me. They're showing five. So they'd have to play like 10 more damage this turn. Fuck it, I might lose the game doing this, but it's the play. How big is this Nazoth? Uh, I have played a beast, a mech, a dragon. Pretty good. This is probably just lethal actually. Easy game. Jade Blossom. I could hit here, hoping that the Jade Golem trades with it, but probably just not really worth. Interesting. Overgrowth means I don't necessarily have to Jade Blossom here, but probably still should. I might even go Solar Eclipse Ferocious Howl next turn. Probably not really worth it though. Yep, looks like an overgrowth. Next turn, Emerald Explorer, and then I can play Dragon Queen Alex Draza. I just kind of snap played this because it was pretty good, but uh, I'm not sure how worth it it was. I am taking quite a bit of damage here, but this seems to be a Jade Golem deck, so I don't think damage matters that much. Hopefully I'm not wrong about that.
probably need to gain some armor here. Which is unfortunate. Well, that's a pretty good draw. So I found this Elise. I probably want to hold it for... Hmm, I don't actually know. I was going to say Floop, but it's not like going infinite helps me against Jade Golems. Tidal Surge. Alright, I think I can play the Dragon Queen here. Overall kind of bad, I would say. I guess I am dead to a couple of, what, Jade Lightnings over the next couple of turns. This Kenrith ad is actually not that bad, maybe. It can res Seder and Circus Amalgam. Probably pretty bad overall, though. Hex, of course. Nazoth. Um, I don't think the Nazoth is particularly impressive at the moment. I probably just go face. That wasn't too bad, I guess. Omu. I can Omu, Germination, Survival of the Fittest. This is just insane, right? And then this Omu still has Spell Burst. Uh, Taunt Minion, sure. Shouldn't be very easy for Shaman to deal with this. But it could just be like double Jade Lightning. Only three mana left. Can't imagine that deck plays like double Lightning Bolt or something. Yeah, looks like I win. Easy game. After playing a bit with this deck, I think I can unfortunately say that it's just not that well positioned in the meta. Most decks simply apply too much pressure for this sort of passive ramp and then play big minion strategy. And the ones that don't apply pressure just OTK you. So I think this deck is in a bit of a rough spot. 
I did make a few off-camera changes to the deck. I added an animated broomstick to help fight for the board a bit. The broomstick I think is particularly good with our biggest minions, Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, Nazoth, and Ysera. Uh, I added Naturalize because I was having trouble dealing with big minions. And Nature Studies for a little bit more early game and it can maybe smooth out ramp curves a bit. As far as other changes I would potentially make to the deck, really the only thing I can say is like maybe you cut some of the greed from the deck. But I don't even really know what it would be. I didn't love the Primordial Protector. Because so many of the 10 drops you get when you hit Survival of the Fittest are just garbage. But I think it's okay. I'm not in like a huge hurry to replace it. So yeah, I don't even really know what I would replace at this point. And there's not really a whole lot that I want to add. Could always just be like... A living roots or something but nothing I can really think of that would make the deck significantly better I think unfortunately value decks are just pretty bad at the moment and this is probably pretty close to as good as you're gonna get 